Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the 2015 State of the County Address. I'm your host, Kimberly Jacobson. We're so glad you could be with us tonight, whether you're here live in our audience, whether you're watching us via the Clackamas County Government Channel or streaming on the web. We're glad you could join us for this interactive event that allows you to ask your Board of County Commissioners your questions that matter the most to you. Now, this is an interactive event, so we want to hear from you throughout the night. If you're here live in our studio audience, you might have noticed that you have these blue cards on your seat. If you have a question for our board, be sure and fill out one of these cards, and one of our staff members will come by and pick them up. Write legibly, because I have to read them. We also invite people at home to participate via Facebook or Twitter at Clackamas County using the hashtag CCSOTC, which is Clackamas County, State of the County. Send in your questions starting now and throughout the event, and we will read them live throughout the night. Keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of topics tonight, and some of them might be similar, so we might combine some of your questions throughout the night. Before I introduce our Board of County Commissioners, I invite all of you to stand with me and honor our nation's flag with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Clackamas County Board of Commissioners. I'll start with our Commission Chair, John Ludlow. <laughs> Next, we have Tootie Smith. Jim Bernard. And Commissioner Schrader is ill tonight. She's disappointed she can't be with us tonight. And uh, Commissioner Savas is excused tonight by the Board of County Commissioners. He is speaking at the Gladstone City Council meeting tonight about the Tri-City Service District and the governance model for the district, which concerns many citizens here in Clackamas County, including Gladstone, Oregon City, West Lynn, and Clackamas County. So he's sorry he can't be here tonight, but we can applaud both of them anyway. <laughs> Before we get going, we're going to officially begin tonight's proceedings with a short video that we prepared that highlights some of the accomplishments in Clackamas County in 2014. Clackamas County, a land of vast forests, fertile valleys, wild rivers, and uncommon natural beauty. Our county has a rich history and a proud heritage, but also a promising future. We balance beauty and bounty with a modern take on our traditional economic engine of agriculture and timber. Following sound environmental practices while utilizing and investing in our natural resources. Beyond the traditional, an efficient and responsive government is laying the groundwork for burgeoning technologies and economic opportunities. Tackling the challenges of expanding and maintaining a strong infrastructure engaging an involved and independent community to grow a strong economy and ensure a safe, healthy, and secure county, building a brighter future for us and the coming generations. Clackamas County is partnering with Oregon City, Metro, and the State of Oregon to advance the Willamette Falls Legacy Project. It would revitalize the former Blue Heron paper mill site and create public access to the falls. Clackamas County's Economic Development Department is committing resources to identify economic opportunities for the site. The goal of this redevelopment is to create high quality jobs, revitalize Oregon City's downtown, and attract visitors to this iconic and historic waterfall. Clackamas County also supports efforts that could repair, reopen, and operate the Willamette Falls locks, providing even more economic benefit. More than 100 people, including county commissioners, city of Canby elected officials, longtime ferry users and operators, came together on September 17th to commemorate the ferry's 100th anniversary. The ferry first began service in September 1914 to help people travel to and from the Clackamas County Fair in Canby, 
from the west side of the Willamette River. 100 years later, the ferry is still steadily and safely transporting people and vehicles daily across the Willamette River between Canby and the Wilsonville-Stafford area. Clackamas County Health Centers faced a critical financial shortfall last year. These centers provide high quality professional services such as primary care, mental health, and dentistry at an affordable cost to the community. Tough choices had to be made. To make sure these vital services continue, Clackamas County implemented cost-saving strategies that improve productivity and efficiency at the health centers while also making them financially viable. Also in 2014, construction continued on phase one of the Sunrise system. It addresses the severe congestion and safety issues in the area while balancing the reality of funding constraints. The final result will be a new two-lane highway on Oregon 224 at I-205 to Southeast 122nd Avenue, providing vehicles and pedestrians with efficient and safe access to and from the area. The county and its partners successfully secured $165 million in federal, state, regional, and local funds for phase one of the project. Completion of the Sunrise System projects will substantially ease congestion, promote job growth, and keep businesses here in Clackamas County. Construction of phase one of the Sunrise System is expected to be completed by the summer of 2016. While Clackamas County has a bright future, there are still many challenges chief among them, the quality of our roads. Clackamas County maintains over 1,400 miles of roads and is responsible for more paved roads than any other county in Oregon. Unlike our neighbors, Clackamas County doesn't have any local sources of funding for road maintenance. Currently, the county faces a $17 million annual gap in funding needed for maintenance and the amount of funding that is actually available. The county is committed to making people aware of this road funding crisis, which affects our businesses, both large and small, and our citizens. We want to make sure the road ahead is safe and smooth. Together, we can shape a vision that will continue Clackamas County's legacy as a great place to live, work, and play. Lots of great things happening in 2014, and now let's find out about 2015. I'm going to invite Commissioner Chair Ledlow up to give us our 2015 State of the County Address. Thank you, Kimberly. It's like they stole my thunder. I'm going to repeat this stuff. Well, good e evening, everybody, and I appreciate those that would show up and, as Kimberly said, watching uh, live streaming watching the video later on uh, for this 2015 State of the County Address. This is the third time I've had the honor of standing before you and reporting on the accomplishments of the previous year and expressing our vision for the future. Tonight, this Board of County Commissioners enters our third year together. I have great admiration and respect for my fellow commissioners. They are diverse, compassionate, and deeply committed to doing the right thing for Clackamas County. Also, I'd like to acknowledge our county administrator, Don Krupp, a valued partner to this board. His leadership is a driving force for improving the many ways that we deliver services here in Clackamas County. So join me in a round of applause for these people. As chair, I spend a lot of time here at Clackamas County and have had the pleasure of observing and closely working with our county staff. Uh, their dedication to serving you is exceptional, and I continue to be extremely impressed with the diligence and professionalism of our county employees. Every month we recognize those employees who have great longevity here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, even 35 years here at the county. Today was no different when we, when we uh, honored these people. What's extraordinary is not only just how long they've been here, but how much they like being here. Uh, it was expressed many times, I like my job, I like my job, but more importantly what they express is, I like working with the people I work with, and that produces great productivity. I'm happy to report that the state of the county is improving. Our local economy continues to recover. Property tax revenue has increased for the second consecutive year. Clackamas County is working to create an environment where new businesses are welcome and existing businesses can thrive and be retained. That good news aside, we must keep laser focus on leveraging the precious dollars that you have entrusted to us to meet the needs of the community. 
Last June, my fellow commissioners and I approved a stable and sound budget that reflected the improving economic conditions. As always, we were acting as careful stewards of the dollars you have entrusted to us. That commitment will guide our decisions as we move towards creation of a new budget now and for the future. And those uh, future budgets will be focused on meeting performance objectives that you have helped us identify through a transparent and accountable process called Performance Clackamas. Performance Clackamas is a comprehensive strategic plan that will unfold over the next five years and set the framework for long-term and sustainable success for our county government. The plan is centered on five key areas of focus, and they are, one, growing a vibrant economy. Our future prosperity will be built on well-paying jobs that support families, the establishment of affordable housing, and promoting capital improvements to grow our workforce. Two, building a strong infrastructure focused on investment in roads, knowing that investment in this infrastructure will both service existing needs and stimulate business growth. Number three, is ensuring safe, healthy, and secure communities focused on well-being of your families and the communities they live in. Number four, honoring, utilizing, promoting, and investing in our natural resources to promote and preserve the extraordinary economic and recreational opportunities these assets provide. And number five, building public trust through good government. Beginning in fiscal year 2015-16, departments that have developed business plans can present a performance budget that matches a level of performance to a level of funding. Clackamas Live, an online dashboard, will be able to easily access online and will allow residents to, one, monitor and evaluate progress towards all of our strategic performance measures, and two, help us make timely decisions and take action that ensures performance targets that have been met. And number three, reinforce accountability across departments and achieve transparency for our customers. I think it's particularly exciting that you'll be able to look online and see how we're doing on our budget as that budget year progresses. For each of these areas of focus, there are specific, strategic, and measurable outcomes. That is how Clackamas County works for you and is working for you in the future. Our journey towards fulfilling these objectives is well underway and will continue for the next few years. You will be able to access and measure our progress as we go. We're beginning to see returns on our investment thanks to the diligence of our economic development staff and our cooperative partnerships. We have added tens of millions of dollars in private sector investment, bringing new jobs to Clackamas County. We continue to work closely with Metro, Oregon City, the state of Oregon, and the new property owner on a plan to explore future development possibilities for the former Blue Heron site at Willamette Falls, which brings jobs, recreation, tourists, and many other opportunities to the entire region. All parties have approved a memorandum of understanding pledging to continue efforts to raise funds for design and en engineering of the new river walk that will afford great views for the public and great recreational opportunities a catalyst project to optimize private sector capital investment and create high-wage private sector jobs. We are on our way towards reaching our five-year infrastructure goals through projects like the Sunrise System Project, a comprehensive effort in partnership with the state to build a new state highway that will enhance and improve transportation connections near the Clackamas Industrial Area, one of the busiest and most critical freight distribution centers in Oregon. We're pleased that with ODOT's cost-saving measures, they're able to add an additional lane in each direction. We're also faced with the challenge of maintaining wastewater treatment capacity while protecting public health and environment. Some of you may have read about a bill being considered in the state legislature that would change the governance structure of the Tri-City Service District, which provides wastewater treatment services for Gladstone, Oregon City, and West Lynn, and CCSD, Clackamas County Service District Number 1, which provides service to Happy Valley, the Hoodland Community, and unincorporated North Clackamas County. The legislation does not address and would not resolve the underlying problem facing the district, namely the critical need for infrastructure improvements. Our county commissioners do understand the issues, and we're actively looking to engage our advisory boards and our regional partners in finding sustainable solutions without legislative intervention. 
And speaking of infrastructure and critical needs, perhaps there is no issue facing Clackamas County today that is more important than finding a way to pay for future road maintenance of more than, as was mentioned in the video, 1,400 miles of roads. Uh, I often say that's like getting in your car right here and driving to Mexico. That's how, how many roads, miles we're responsible for. So, but the road ahead is challenging and Clackamas County does have a dedicated revenue source, does not have a, a dedicated revenue source for road maintenance. Let me state that again, we do not have that. L unlike Multnomah County, Washington County, and the city of Portland, Clackamas County has no independent means of paying for our road maintenance needs. Years ago, we were receiving uh, timber revenue that amounted to 10 and even $12 million per year, and a lot of that was dumped onto our roads to fix them. That is all gone now. Property taxes, by law, cannot be used for road maintenance, and the existing limited sources of such revenue the county does receive are insufficient to meet our present and future needs. As a result, there is an annual gap of approximately $17 million, and that gap is growing. Until now, our county has done a magnificent job managing its available resources and using supplemental federal funding for timber-dependent communities to fill that gap. But again, as I mentioned, that funding is now gone. And even if the state legislature increases the gasoline tax or raises vehicle registration fees, our shared portion will not come close to meeting our present and future needs. According to a recent estimate, the cost of preventive maintenance on county-owned roads that are assessed in fair or good condition would be about $43 million. If those same roads deteriorated to poor condition, that es estimated cost to rebuild them climbs to an astounding $523 million. Think it can't happen? Look at Portland, where according to recent news stories, the lack of preventive maintenance have caused road repair and maintenance costs to skyrocket from about $38 million to nearly a billion dollars. During our last budget cycle, the County Budget Committee allocated $500,000 in precious discretionary dollars to supplement our spending on road maintenance needs. But that is not sustainable. With 54% of our roads in fair to poor condition, we must act now. The County is presently involved in a major effort to educate and engage the public about this important issue. We have work to do. A recent poll of registered voters in Clackamas County indicated the public is somewhat aware of our road maintenance needs, but a majority of those surveyed do not yet support new revenue sources needed to solve this problem. Finding a long-term solution to this problem will continue to be a commission priority over the next year. Just as we can't hope to meet our potential um, as a business destination without a strong infrastructure, we must also address our land use situation. Our region continues to grow. Recent projections call for our population in the Portland metropolitan area to increase by roughly 600,000 people. These forecasts call for a growth of nearly 400,000 jobs during that same period. There's an adage I'm fond of using that if you're not at the table, you're probably on the menu. If Clackamas County wants to be part of that growth and keep pace with our surrounding counties and the region, we need to take a serious look at our present and future, future available employment lands. In order to do so, we will need to work closely with our local cities, communities, metro, and the state. Such cooperation is extremely important to assure that the development is coordinated and smart. To achieve this, we are working diligently to assess our current and future needs, conduct necessary community outreach to build support around common objectives, and to identify possible solutions. While we do not have plans at this time to seek a legislative solution, that doesn't mean that our work has stopped. And that doesn't mean we will not react to legislative bills that try to resolve our land use needs here in Clackamas County. We will continue to actively engage with all of our stakeholders to keep this issue at the forefront of our local governing agenda. We're committed to serving you and to ensuring that Clackamas County remains the county of choice in Oregon to live, work, and play. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chair Ludlow, and hopefully that inspired some questions for you tonight. And again, if you haven't asked your question yet, you can still do that. If you're in our audience, feel free to fill out one of the blue forms, lift it up, and one of our staff members will come by right legibly.
We are not going to be calling on any audience members live, and there won't be an open mic, so just be sure and fill out one of those questionnaires. Or, of course, online, you can send your questions at Clackamas County on Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag CC. SOTC, which by the way, I think that's a very unique thing we do here in Clackamas County to open this up for people that are here in our audience and also at home and give them the opportunity to ask their questions live. So if you haven't done so already, please be sure and ask your questions. We're going to try to get to as many questions as we can tonight. Feel free to write your first name the city you're from, and if you'd like to direct it to one of our commissioners, feel free to do that as well. And commissioners, if one of you wants to answer and piggyback and the other one wants to answer as well, that's also acceptable for tonight. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our first question. This is from Facebook. Don Ask. Uh, this one is actually directed to you, Commissioner Smith. What land use and infrastructure investments will improve the quality of life for the citizens of Clackamas County, both, both rural and urban? The Willamette Falls Legacy Project could bring jobs and housing to Clackamas County, but land use and infrastructure investments will be needed for this to happen. Well, that's an interesting question, am I on? You're set, yeah. Uh, we just... Uh, Today in our policy session, uh, it was very public, and we s lended our support to some land use bills in Clackamas County. We are in a job deficit in this county. I think we've recovered uh, just over 60% of our pre-recession job loss. And you talk about quality of life. And for many people, quality of life means a family wage job to be able to uh, pay for your transportation, transportation, your housing, and send your kids to school. Uh, uh, to the school of their choice and buy the groceries. For others, it means having wide open spaces and parks. And then for others, it means going out into our forests or up into the mountain. So when you talk about quality of life, um, it's those things and many more. I'm working on uh, the uh, Willamette Locks project to try to reopen that. We've been uh, seeking out help from our federal delegation. They are very interested. They've offered to help on that, to talk to the Corps of Engineers to have travel up and down the Willamette River once again. With the locks being closed, it means our river is non-navigable. I think that goes to quality of life, both for our business and commerce to be transported up and down the river, for recreation, tourism, and many other uh, avenues that uh, we used to take for granted but somehow have been taken away. So when you talk about quality of life, I think people move to Clackamas County because we do have an extraordinary mix of urban, rural, and city. So you can come to Clackamas County and, par and partake of any type of uh, lifestyle you want. Uh, we really have it all. All right, go ahead and hang on to that. It looks like this one is for Commissioner Bernard, if you want to pass it down, unless one of you wanted to well, I'd like to add Back a little on something. That? Yeah, to go that. ahead. Absolutely. You know, a lot of what makes life in Clackamas County great is the things you can't see. You know, it's adequate water, a, a great sewage treatment uh, plant, and additional capacity is is what we're talking about. We need to add capacity, but it's also internet access. You know, we recently. Uh, uh, spread out uh, uh, across the county and provided internet access to our schools, which reduced the costs. But it's also the roads and maintenance. All those things that you expect in your day-to-day uh, -day life are also, also those things that make your life better here in Clackamas County. So it's not only those investments you see, but those investments you don't. All right. If you want to hang on to that, Mike. We also got some uh, questions earlier this week. We put it out on email. We had people emailing in, and this question was geared towards you, Commissioner Bernard. Um, Tom asks, Commissioners, how is county government preparing for the development opportunities and imperatives created by the new Park Avenue light rail station? Are we ready to permit and motivate the best use of the area surrounding the station? Well, we actually had a good discussion about that issue today, you know, whether we're going to do some uh, station analysis. You know, I've always been an advocate of light rail. I think it's a huge economic driver, and I think we have to take advantage of that. I think McLaughlin Boulevard, which used to be a lot of car dealerships, still are, and still a lot of businesses that are empty or have... Um, 
uh, leases in there that uh, provide, you know, services of uh, of not the highest quality. Uh, if we invest more in that area and increase the economic development opportunities, and, and that may be density around uh, the light rail station, uh, which we need to study, uh, then there's a, just a ton of opportunity. One thing about uh, increased economic activity is that it reduces crime. One of the arguments against light rail was that increase in crime. That may be true if you let that community continue to decay, but you invest in that community, and there's lots of opportunity to increase the eyes on the street, increase the quality of life in that area, and that in turn will produce uh, you know, greater economic opportunity for those people in that community, and that means jobs also. All right, anybody else wanna to touch on that or should we move on? All right. So uh, via email, we have a question. Jane asks, do you plan to widen Eidelman Road? There is virtually no shoulder with many twists. So commissioners, obviously, this is about a specific road, but road maintenance is a huge issue for the county. What is the current plan to address the shortage of funding for road maintenance? How will you address that? Well, that uh, certainly is a discussion we also had today. There are a variety of methods to ask the public to help pay for road maintenance. Now, I think what they were talking about was road improvement, and there's a big differential. If we already are behind every year $17 million in just the maintenance, my belief is we've got no business doing new roads or huge improvements until we can take care of what we have. Um, so, you know, one of the, our problem areas is that which is a largely dense, unincorporated area, that area from Gladstone to Milwaukee. My predecessor and other commissioners have talked for a long time about, wouldn't it be great if Oak Grove, let's call it Jennings Lodge, Oak Grove, Oak Lodge, wouldn't it be great if they became a city? Because what's happened in that particular area is they expect city services, yet we don't get the revenue sharing that cities get. And so, sure, there's a lot of places that need sidewalks. They need culverts. They need filled ditches. They, they need bus stops. They need a whole bunch of things. But we're a county, not a city. We don't experience the same amount of revenue. So m my belief is, and I've said it before, I'm not afraid to say it, and other commissioners have said so too, it's time that Oak Grove became a city. We don't personally care whether they become part of Milwaukee, an existing city, a part of Gladstone, an existing city, or create their own city. But it is increasingly difficult to act like a city when we don't have the revenue that matches it. Well, I want to add that, you know, what we're considering, at least I believe the three of us up here agree, is that any additional revenue will be strictly for maintenance. It's not for building new roads. It's not for sidewalks. It's just to get our roads back up. You know, in a road, uh, what you drive on is only part of the road. The ditches beside uh, prevent washouts and prevent uh, the road from caving in. The brush that blocks the intersection or a stop signs, all part of road maintenance. So uh, I th we have agreed, I know the three of us up here at least, have agreed that it, as far as Clackamas County share, that's going to be strictly used for maintenance. As far as cities, if the cities decide to partner with us on this, they can decide how to use that money. But, you know, today we received a list. Uh, I was trying to remember the list, see if Eidelman was on that list. But, you know, just adding a few, let's say a foot to the side of the road, and I live on a road that has no no place to walk is very expensive because you have to move the ditches and often you impact the neighbor property or hillsides, which can increase that cost substantially. And certainly straightening out a road is a major project, but those dollars we raise will be for maintenance. All right, so we have a question now on marijuana. You had to think we were going to have one or two of those tonight. This is actually from our live audience. Thank you for participating. County staff is on record that marijuana commercial grows are allowed by RRFF5 zoning in the Mount Hood corridor of Clackamas County. 
When will Clackamas County address the zoning oversight as marijuana is illegal according to federal law? Well, there, there's two different kinds of marijuana here. There's medical and there's the coming soon recreational. Now, um, the, the medical marijuana, by the way, we're, we're starting to hone in on time, place, and manner for medical marijuana, but the rules have not been set by, by uh, OLCC in regards to recreational marijuana. They will decide where it can be grown, how it can be distributed, how it can be uh, retailed, we cannot, we're not doing that. They're doing a series of events around the state of Oregon now where they're gathering input on this. And you can bet the legislature is going to have a little bit to say about this too. But as far as growing marijuana currently, uh, you know, it is agricultural for whatever reason. And right now, again, this is on recreational. Remember that you cannot grow it, and it cannot be seen from outside of wherever you grow it. So essentially that causes all the growth to occur on the inside of buildings. Uh, I don't know that it was an oversight per se. I don't think anybody knew that, that uh, marijuana was going to be passed by the people and the usage was same uh, in November. And uh, I, we have not taken any any um, any action to prevent that from being grown in Clackamas County, nor do I believe that Measure 91 currently would allow us to put that restriction on. We have a lot of legal ba uh, legal uh, definitions yet to be given forward about this. And like I say, since the legislature is in session and the OLCC is addressing this, there's a lot of new rules yet we have to realize. All right. Anybody else? No. All right. I wouldn't be surprised if we came back to this. Or you want to add to that? Oh, I, I just want to add that, um, you know, when the vote took place, um, I was a no. And I, if Clackamas County residents had voted no, we might have put it on the ballot. But the Clackamas County residents voted yes. And it's our responsibility to follow what they say. Lots of interesting discussions to follow on this topic, I'm sure, but we're switching gears right now. We have another audience question. What are you doing to protect the existing incorporated neighborhoods from being degraded through zone changing to promote infilling? We had that discussion yet again today, and I see some of the folks in the room attended our meeting, and thank you uh, for coming to that meeting and this one as well. Um, I think we've had a developer wanted to develop the Adventist property, evangelical property, excuse me, and they wanted to reduce the lot size because it was more profitable uh, for, for his endeavor. And we had a lot of people in the area say, no, we want to maintain our quality of life and just leave the lot size the same, the same density. And, you know, I support that. But I also support the development, and I support the right for people to be able to uh, employ their private property rights and have the ability to, um, if if they're in, um, if they're zoned um, R7, for instance, and they own 14,000 square feet, they can have an extra lot. A lot of these places in the area that we're talking about are old, well-established neighborhoods, which they're beautiful, and I drive through there often, and they're older, well-established homes. Well, I like, I like seeing that too, but I don't want to diminish people's property rights by saying, no, you can no longer develop. I don't believe that's right. I don't believe that's prudent. Um, so we're working a lot on a lot of things in our ZDOs, our zone development ordinances, to address these problems. We're listening to everybody. Your question is quite timely, and I'm sure uh, our other commissioners want to comment on this one. Yeah, I think I'm confused by it because it said our existing incorporated areas. If it's incorporated, we don't have anything to do with it. That means it's within the city limits of a city. Unincorporated. Oh, does it? I thought you said incorporated. I All might right. have so misspoke. So unincorporated areas. Again, you know, uh, there are established areas. I grew up in Oak Grove. I know the area extremely well. Um, I think with some people in an area like that, Jennings Lodge specifically, where they're used to 10,000 and larger lots, they figure it's high density when it goes down to 7,000 square foot. Now, I think they have to reacquaint themselves with Portland and perhaps Metro and what they think 
high density is because, you know, in some areas and certainly aspirationally, my predecessor pushed 30 units per acre. We're talking about with 7,000 square foot lots, less than five units per acre. So again, but that's, they get used to that, they appreciate that, and they don't want it busted up and lose the character of their area. Today we had quite a presentation on this, and we're given eight and actually nine options by our planning manager, and we decided right now on none simply because we ran out of time. Uh, the commissioners like to talk about this. They like to talk about what we can do, what we should do, and especially on an important decision like this, we want to make the right decision. So we put that off for at least a week, at which time we'll have another study session on it. And again, invite all those who are there and many other to come listen to us talk about how we shall maintain the character of our existing neighborhoods. I just want to add that uh, I know of no neighborhood that we've rezoned with higher density. Do you know of any? I don't. Uh, I, I think that if somebody requests it, we'll certainly look at it. I just got back from a trip from Australia. Ten miles out of uh, Sydney, Australia, the zoning is R7. Ten miles from Sydney. I think we don't want that to happen. Uh, you know, an, uh, an hour drive... Uh, get you out in, I just was shocked at the density outside of Sydney, and we're talking way outside of Sydney. Of course, the advantage they have is a great transit system. All right. Ready for our next one. All right, this one's from Twitter, and I just want to take this opportunity to remind you here at home that you can participate via Twitter or Facebook at Clackamas County using the hashtag SS excuse me, CCSOTC, that's CCSOTC, Clackamas County, State of the County. Be sure and send your questions that way. This one's from Twitter, Shelley asks, what is your economic development vision for the Willamette Falls Legacy Project? Please explain how film and media fits in. Well, we've already had uh, shows filmed down at the Willamette Falls. Uh, Leverage filmed down there, The Librarian, and I believe Grimm also filmed down there. And there's, I think, some things in the hopper, maybe some movies coming out. Uh, it will fit in nicely. As far as the economics are concerned, uh, a private developer bought the property for $2.2 million when it was in receivership with the bank. We thought that was very good. Since that time, they have deeded over uh, an easement uh, for the right of way to make public access in a park. He has also agreed to uh, pay 20% of the maintenance costs over that time. Metro, one of our partners, has graciously come on board and said we will de develop the park, take responsibilities so far uh, with other agencies to um, help develop that. The state of Oregon put in $5 million for that. They have released it because we met our economic and planning goals. I believe Metro is going to be putting some more money in it. We have a legislature asking for another $5 million. So if we can pocket 15 to $20 million, it looks like we can do that. Then we can go to the nonprofits in the state of Oregon who are very interested in this to make the Riverwalk a reality. Also, I just got back from Washington, D.C. We're working with our partners in uh, the D.C. area at the federal government to make this happen. Now, the other side of this is the area of that mill site that's developed, developable, that is not in the floodplain. Uh, there is going to be a mixed use. The developer has not said exactly what that mixed use is going to be, but they are making plans for that and going forward. We can expect some R&D, some high-wage jobs, maybe a motel, maybe some condominiums. I mean, I would love to have a condominium there looking the, over the river and the falls. Wouldn't that just be really fun? So uh, while we have the park, that will probably be developed first to draw the people in. We will have businesses there that they can acquaint and uh, just help the whole revitalization of the downtown uh, Oregon City area. And I think it's going to be a boon to the county as a whole, to the region as a whole. It's going to draw people because the Willamette Falls is the second largest waterfall in the United States by volume behind Niagara Falls. Most people don't know that. Most people who live in Oregon have never seen the falls. And so we've all been on uh, tours out there, and it's absolutely breathtaking, and I can't wait 
for every person who wants to, to be able to see the falls. Okay, got it. Oh, Tootie said that real well. <laughs> I, I think we've got to remember, too, that, that it's not just the old Blue Heron site, really, for a, the metamorphosis that this particular area needs. They redid the arch bridge, and the arch bridge... Um, area, that means the project on West Lynn, would be a valued addition so that both sides would uh, enjoy prosperity. Uh, I have often told the owners of the paper mill on the other side, on the West Lynn side, since there will be a, a great change over on the Oregon City side, that, that perhaps that if you've looked at that mill over there on the Willamette River, the, p p p maybe they could paint it in a Tuscany theme to make it fit in a little bit better with all the great things we do on the other th side. Let's not forget what the river walk is estimated to cost, 30 to $35 million. That has not been achieved. And we would like to see some federal partnerships in that as well. Our de dedication as a commission has long been about job redevelopment in that area because that's what was lost there is jobs. Family wage jobs were lost there. So I think our focus will get back to that, remembering that the true partners in that is Oregon City and Metro. We have contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars and probably still will continue contributing money towards lobbying Washington, D.C. to bring the monies back that are necessary to realize great development on this property. Awesome. Then I have to agree with you, Commissioner Smith. I was just down there geocaching the other day, and I have to tell you, that is just the most amazing view, and we really do have some amazing cities in Clackamas County if you have a chance to explore them. No wonder the movies and TV shows want to shoot here, right? So we have another question via email. Andrea asks, I work in what's considered a first offender prevention program for at-risk youth in several cities in Clackamas County. What is the county's funding priority in that area, and is there an increase in prevention funding planned for this population? Well, I, you know, I would have to say that, you know, my priority at the county has always been public safety. And the best way to prevent people going to jail and committing crimes is supporting our youth. So, you know, we have invested in grants. Uh, we had a $200,000 grant this year, uh, which we divided in many organizations, which help support those programs that work with youth. Um, you know, I'd just say, say that that's probably our greatest investment. Um, I'll be working this year to look at getting more money in those kind of programs. But, you know, we, I would say Parrot Creek, for example, uh, which is a facility that works with, uh, I would say, endangered youth, uh, and hopefully preventing them into, uh, in, uh, from going into our system. But also it's uh, various programs, uh, whether it's in high schools um, or whether it's in, uh, you know, even our grade schools that we're reaching out to kids to make sure that they have the services they need. And oftentimes that's just food, uh, making sure they get the services they need that, that they don't get into our system. Um, other than that, I think that many of our departments have set that as a priority. We know that uh, the Relief Nursery uh, in Gladstone has been very successful. Uh, actually, our um, our center over here, or, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, Family Justice Center, uh, Safe Place, th that, that kind, of, kind of investment in families of abuse also has dealt with hundreds, I think 841 children who are with their parents who are in bad situations. So we're making sure that they get the services they need, uh, whether that's mental health services, uh, you know, uh, some um, child care, other, other ways to help those families get out of that cycle because that cycle uh, of abuse tends to go on throughout that person's life. So, uh, so we're just trying to be the barrier and help turn those folks around. So I would say that's a huge investment along with the work the Sheriff's Department has done. Our Clackamas County Commissioners are very proud of our juvenile department. Helen Crawford is a director over there. They enjoy the lowest recidivism rate in the state. Their programs have been emulated by other counties because of their success. And, and really part of that is not only the psychological counseling 
and the support groups and peer groups, but also such uh, programs as restorative justice, where these young people have to work to repay their victims. And, and you know, that helps remold them. In, in this state, by the way, I'm involved with in volunteering with the Department of Corrections. They also have one of the lowest recidivism rates in the United States. So there's a reason for this. They're educating these people, and that's where, believe me, they are lacking. Let's not forget that not only in our jail but also in our prisons, over 60% of the people that are incarcerated have mental problems. And as Jim said, you know, early intervention is very important, especially when they're juveniles. If we can turn them the other way, we can save them from a bad later day. All right. Here's an email question we received earlier this week from Concerned in Welches. Uh, this person asks, I'm a large taxpayer by most standards, so why am I one of those folks who has very little police support in my area in Welches? Oh. Well, Jim, are you ready for this one, too? Um, we have an enhanced service district uh, that the sheriff runs, and it is in, usually in a higher-density areas. Uh, that includes, by the way, Damascus, which is not that dense, but especially in Oak Grove and those areas. Uh, we do not have the funds, even though we give the majority of our discretionary money towards public safety, we do not have the funds in sparsely populated areas to give intensive patrols. The, just, the money is not there. Uh, we know sometimes the response times uh, are uh, of concern to people, but uh, again, remembering that what I said in my speech, that we're just now starting to recover. The last two years, that we haven't had to lay people off just to exist, and that has affected our sheriff's office as well. But, you know, um, a large taxpayer, I, I, I don't know what to say about that, but everybody gets the same treatment when you call 911. And, you know, it, the, the spacings that we have cars cause it so that if somebody is arrested, that car disappears and is off duty and other cars have to fill in. So it is constantly a, a juggling act to make sure that people in unincorporated Clackamas County have the protection that they, they desire. Yeah, I was just going to add, that, you know, there's actually another, another issue. Our sheriff has not had full employment except for uh, maybe a couple of days since I've been here. Oh, uh, over six years. That means, you know, with retirements, you know, a lot of baby boomers are retiring and uh, he's just constantly hiring. And, you know, a reduction in state police uh, dollars and in investment has also put a greater burden on the county. But, you know, if there's a specific problem, uh, I have found that if you ask the sheriff, uh, he will respond. And I have in the past had this same question and uh, we talked to the sheriff, and immediately there was a response. So if there's a specific problem, we'd be happy to respond. All right, just a reminder tonight, if you're in our studio audience, there's still time to ask questions. You can fill out one of your cards. One of our staff members will come by, ask your question. You can also participate online at Clackamas County via Facebook or Twitter using the hashtag CCSOTC. So our next question, I told you we'd come back to recreational marijuana. It was just a guess, but of course. Um, this one's via email. Kate asks, do you have any plans to restrict commercial recreational marijuana production in agri agricultural or industrial zone areas within Clackamas County? Well, no, we do not have plans for that because we have not discussed it because OLC is still in the rulemaking phase of this, I assume to be approved by the state legislature. Uh, I know there's a lot of interest in doing that. Some folks is going to think that's going to be an economic boon to them, and some folks, you know, are don't like it. I, like Jim, uh, did not approve the vote for recreational marijuana. Uh, I'm still against it. Um, if it's left up to the Board of Commissioners, which I doubt it will be, um, we will have to take an action on that. So the answer is no, we don't have plans because we're not allowed to do that. As a matter of fact, I'll add this. In Measure 91, we are not even allowed to tax marijuana in our county to pay for 
the nuisance that it will cause to pay for the extra, I'm assuming, uh, sheriff patrols or extra medical attention. So we are very much starting out as a deficit in uh, the recreational marijuana. And um, Colorado has been a perfect example. I wish the voters and I wish the proponents of this bill would have waited a year to have Colorado go through or two years to go through the growing pains if they wanted to legalize marijuana to see what the pitfalls were on this. But I think everybody got in a hurry to make it legal. Well, when you legalize a controlled stu substance that has always been illegal, I hope people realize it is heavily regulated. With legalization comes regulation. Just because it's legal does not mean it's a free-for-all to, to be able to plant it in whatever for forest or farm zone you have. I think people are going to be very disappointed in that. Uh, I probably predict 10, 20 years down the road, we're going to have a vote in Oregon to unregulate, deregulate marijuana because they're not going to like the laws on it. So the people that voted for this to support it, to think it's going to be a, a, an end all to everything, I think might be disappointed at what happens at the state. You know, the last thing I want to see in Clackamas County, if you've ever seen uh, pictures of grow operations, there, if it is on land, if it is on, in a building, the property is surrounded by fences, constantino wire, cameras, lighting, etc., and it seems like that'd be a magnet for miscreants. So, I, I, we until we know the rules laid down by the Oregon Liquor Control Commission, we can't react to anything as our hands are literally tied. So, we may want to pass some ordinance right now and find out that we didn't have the right to do so. So there's still a lot of uh, open-ended questions on recreational marijuana, including, as I mentioned, the processing of same, the distribution, the retail outlets, and the grow operations. All right. Our next question is via email. John asks, has the county ever explored sponsoring guided fishing trips up and down the major rivers? We have some great waterways that are patrolled by the sheriff, but there are no county-sponsored fishing trips. There are professional services which offer this already, but it seems like a great opportunity to raise revenue for the county. Well, in order to have a successfully guided trip, you need fish in the river. And uh, with our sea lion population, it's pretty much taking care of the fish. I can speak to this issue because I come from a family and a husband who fishes and all of our friends fish. A very good friend of mine was a guide on, on the Clackamas River and on the uh, Willamette River. He's no longer with us. Uh, there's other guides out there that I know. And I don't think it's government's place to be in competition with the private sector in a business. I think that our revenue stream that we get off that would not pay for the boat, for the licenses, for the liability insurance, and all the stuff you have to have. So I would not be in favor of the county uh, going into that type of business in competition with our private sector. Actually, I agree. I, I, I don't think we should do that. But I'll tell you, PGE, one of the members of PGE is out here. Uh, in Estacada, there is uh, an area near a dam where, uh, for many years, uh, it wasn't really accessible to the folks in Estacada or anybody else. And uh, in partnership with uh, PGE, uh, that area is opening up. So our tourism department does actually work with those groups. Uh, to, you know, promote fishing on the Clackamas River and the Willamette River. So we do invest in a way in uh, providing greater access in those areas and partnership with folks like PGE. PGE um, is responsible for the fish population up the Clackamas and have done a, a great job in their stewardship of that. Um, I think the figure, and I'm pretty close to this, but 65% of the fish up the Clackamas are native. Now, you won't find that matched anywhere across the western United States. And to large part, that is PGE stewardship in regards to preserving this, this important run, these runs. Uh, I have observed a, uh, something they're going to launch uh, up into um, the reservoir, North Fork Reservoir, a, an incredible heavy steel structure that will float. It, uh, even though it's probably about 18 to 20 feet tall, only you're only going to see three feet of it. 
It's an intake that will recreate that uh, swirling motion that fish like and be able to transport them through a more dangerous area of the ladders down below um, the dam and therefore, again, save more and more fish. Like I say, all steel. Don't ask me how it's going to float. But it, I know for sure that it costs $21 million. And so... Kudos to PGE for doing a fantastic job of taking care of, of, of a very important run that we should be very proud of. All right. We have another email question. And a lot of people are upset in Washington County that it's closing um, medical clinics there. What are Clackamas County plans around providing medical care to residents in need? Well, let me throw this out now. Uh, you probably saw the video where it said that our, our, uh, you know, our clinics got in trouble, financial trouble. And probably because there wasn't enough oversight. But before we knew it, uh, they were down millions of dollars. Now, we had the option of closing them. Remember, in Washington County, they're closing their two clinics. And there's been some backlash with that. We don't want to close them, but we want them to be sustainable. And so they tightened up the ship. Kudos to uh, uh, Cindy Becker. I now uh, departed, and she voluntarily departed for a better job, uh, of Health, Housing, and Human Services Director. Um, they really tighten the belt. The dashboard that we look at every every month shows their recovery. They're on schedule and have paid payments to pay us back for the $2 million cash investment we put into that. We suspect that that will be sustainable and our clinics will be open. Remember the changes coming down the pike with the Affordable Care Act and with more, and we do get money for Medicaid patients coming to see us. We do get money from insurance, regular insurance carriers. If people say, this is closer, I'm going to go ahead and use these people. We do provide dental. We do provide mental. And all of that is sustainable if we continue to very much tighten the belt on the operation of that. And Mr. Krupp has kept a close eye on this, and I believe that we're going to be able to continue this important service into the future. Yeah, I just wanted to add, you know, it's also in great partnership with the area hospitals because one of the greatest expenses, of course, is the emergency room. And our clinics, uh, whether small or large, have been able to uh, reduce the emergency room. Uh, folks go in the emergency room. Uh, I was just reading something today where, uh, you know, those numbers are way down. And some of that's because our clinics are doing some in-home services. Yeah, and, you know, we also can have been able to identify those people who use those services sometimes excessively. Uh, I spent one uh, weekend out with a fire district, uh, spent the night... Uh, it was pretty quiet night. That's too bad, or that's good. But uh, one of the things that was uh, fairly consistent that you always heard about, you have people who uh, may be diabetics, and uh, once or twice a week, they're in the emergency room. Instead, many of our ambulance services are going out to uh, those folks and making sure that they, are, they understand uh, and that they're, uh, they are getting the, uh, taking the medication as they should, watching their uh, sugar. And uh, that's another way we've been investing to make sure that we uh, reduce the burden on hospitals, which in turn, they have invested in us. All right, we have another question via email. Since the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District measure failed, what is the financial plan for the district? What services will change? Well, the financial plan for the district is, uh, like a lot of what of our households experience, uh, you live within your means and you don't spend more than you make. So we um, sent out a plan for the voters just in that district to, number one, give them autonomy. They could take over the parks district board, can take over and manage the parks the way they see fit, and to increase uh, the tax base by 35 cents because we had a lot of complaints that there are some areas in the county that are underserved, that they didn't have the parks that we wanted. Well, we offered that up to the voters and it was rejected um, by pretty good margin. So what that tells us is in order to have these new parks, these new facilities, you have to have a source of money. Clackamas County General Fund does not 
pay for the park system in the county. So what we will have to do is we'll have to trim back. Uh, some services and some parks will have a priority over others, and we'll just have to live within our means. And we did everything that we thought that could be done to uh, make a vibrant park system in this district, but we were... Uh, Unfortunately, the voters didn't agree with that, so we do what the voters want. All right, we have another question via email from Heather. She writes, is there any way the turnouts on Sunnyside Road can be reconfigured? There are accidents just waiting to happen. Well, you know, we can do anything you want on the roads as long as we have the money to do it. Um, that would, I don't know if that falls under the maintenance category or if that's an addition to the roads. I don't know how technical that is, but we are considering this board of directors what we can do to raise more money in Clackamas County. And voters may be asked that question in this year or next year or at some time uh, down the road uh, exactly um, what you want to do as far as paying for more roads. Uh, we do not, at this point, have a transportation package from the state of Oregon. And the federal road um, trust fund has dried up. So without those two influxes of cash, we're pretty much looking at ourselves in the face saying, what can we do to extend the life of our roads before we even think about adding new turnouts here? Because we do know one thing, that the traffic is increasing in Clackamas County. We know on uh, I-205, when it merges from three lanes to two, that is backed up for a long time, almost all times of the day now. So we recognize that we have real problems. It's a matter of prioritizing the money that we have in the bank and trying to go out and get new money for what we feel are the most uh, critical assets to improve. I, you know, since this is interactive, uh, are they talking about the roundabout? I don't know what the it was, turnout It was is, titled so. turnout, and it wasn't an in-audience question, so I think we just have to well, kind of guess to what they were. Uh, you know, she can address that to us later. You know, uh, again, Australia and New Zealand, roundabouts everywhere. Uh, you know, and it's amazing, you know, once you get used to them. But Clackamas County doesn't have a lot of roundabouts. So I don't know. I, I think we'll ask our uh, safe communities group to take a look at if that is, in fact, the roundabout issue. And maybe there's some signage issues that we could address on that. Let me remind everybody that Clackamas County started the Sunnyside development known as Clackamas Town Center, Clackamas Regional Center. And they had an urban renewal district that collected vast sums of money um, that contributed $22 million to the teachers' union that owns Clackamas Town Center uh, for remodeling purposes, don't you know? Also $25 million to the Green Line, which was promised to bring a, a renaissance to the area, a complete change, a makeover, a facelift. That never happened either. There's an urban growth management agreement that is, is agreed upon between Milwaukee and Happy Valley pretty much goes like this. Happy Valley will annex everything to 205 going to the west. Milwaukee will annex everything going to the east to that same boundary. Well, Happy Valley has been working on it, but Milwaukee has not. Now, there's, there's a great abundance of assessed value in there, and now we've stopped collecting in that urban renewal district and agreed to distribute $48 million, $9 million back to schools, police, fire, libraries, where that money came from, and $39 million into the road systems around there trying to fix the problems that exist. They will not get better, folks, and the cash cow has ended. So it... If the cities say that we'd like to eventually take that area, they should take it now while we're still spending money in there. But there will, there, there's going to be more problems with that, that area and that intersection. And Sunnyside Overcross over 205, especially now that Eagle Landing may be coming with 2.1 million square feet to a quadrant of that intersection. 
So if that was your question and you want to clarify it after tonight's event, or if you have questions after tonight's event is over, you can still ask them via Clackamas County's Facebook and Twitter accounts. Be sure and ask your questions, and maybe we can get some more clarification on those. Um, we have another social media question from Facebook. How is Clackamas County addressing the need for affordable housing in the Portland metro area? Well, I'm on the Affordable Housing Committee to consider long-term trends. Uh, we're studying the issue. We're doing an inventory of affordable housing in Clackamas County. And um, affordable housing in, in the sense of government, because I think there's affordable housing to the private sector, being able to afford to buy your first home, that's a different issue. Uh, we've taken an inventory, and what we've learned in Clackamas County, we have very old a lot of our facilities are very old. And we're working with HUD because we got most of the money from HUD to purchase these uh, and maintain these properties, to possibly sell some sites and then reinvest it in new housing that is closer to the services that people really want. We have a couple of 20-acre sites that um, are up on a hill outside of Oregon City uh, and uh, Park Place that have really become prized view properties. They're 20 acres with scattered units on them, huge, huge green spaces. We don't feel that that's the best use of the money. They're old. They were built in World War II with uh, just minimal improvements to keep them going. We think that if we can liquidate those, put them into more affordable housing to do that. But you have to remember, most of the money for affordable housing came from the federal government. And they have tightened their belts through sequestration. HUD uh, has decided um, to send us less and less money. So we're always finding creative ways to do this. We can still use vouchers. There's supported housing for people with disabilities, for people with um, mental illness, for people coming out of jail, and uh, transitional housing. So there's so many needs for this. We have many more needs than we have um, places available. So it is a big issue. Uh, what I can say is that we're working on it. We have a wonderful work group. We're going to make a presentation to the board soon on this. And uh, just know that all of our board is very concerned about this. But um, we're doing the best we can. And Commissioner Smith, you kind of touched on this, but here's a follow-up that's related. Clackamas County is some of the wealthiest communities in the state, but in other areas, people are struggling to make ends meet. What is the county doing to meet the needs of those communities? Well, we, I've talked about this a lot. This person must have been listening to our, our um, meetings because we have Lake Oswego in Clackamas County. It's so the richest city in the state of Oregon. Then you head south and east, and we have some of the not-so-prosperous communities out there. And a lot of it's because they're dependent on our natural resource base. Well, when the federal government decided to uh, take our federal lands and basically render them non-usable, to places like Malala, Essequada, Colton, and even Sandy uh, for our natural resources, for our logging, for um, that type of thing. Those communities just about rolled up and died. And the promise of tourism jobs never happened there. The promise of revitalization never happened there. And so we, although some of these communities still exist, it's just on a fine, fine, fine line. I have taken on the issue of the federal lands on this board because I feel it's important. 53% of Clackamas County is owned by the federal government. So that has been taken away. I've worked on this issue since 1988. And remember, the receipts off of our federal forest used to pay for things like schools, K through eight schools, used to build our infrastructure, sewers in some places, uh, paid for our roads, so it's just a small percentage of what our timber can do. It also created family wage jobs, not just in the woods and the sawmill, but for your mechanic, you know, for your suppliers, for your fuel people. And now most of those jobs are high-tech, computerized jobs in the areas where our young people could certainly be employed. Uh, they're sought-after jobs. They can work in the woods or they can be outside, and that's very attractive to some people. So it's an issue that's very close to my heart. Uh, I could talk all day on this, but I don't think I will. 
Well, we actually had an issue today. There's some legislation to help get natural gas out to Estacada, which we do support. And, uh, you know, I'd like to figure out a way to do that. That in itself has prevented some of the industrial lands in Estacada to, to develop, as well as our dark, the internet access that we're providing out in that area will open up opportunities. So we are investing in those rural communities. All the way up Mount Hood, we're doing the same thing. So, uh, you know, I, I, I've got to go back to something John said, just to kind of be... Uh, an advocate for urban renewal, I guess. You know, Clackamas Town Center went on too long and everything. And the dream of light rail, in fact, you, you must remember that we went through the greatest turndown in the economy in history, and nothing developed. And I anticipate that with the increase in the economy, something will occur along that line as will occur along the orange line. So, I mean, you, I just I just have to remind people that we have just went, now John's reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> we just went through a really tough economy. And, and I hope that, you know, uh, actually Clackamas County owns a piece of land near that stop. I really would like to open up that discussion again and talk about should we be doing something with that? Should we put affordable housing or should we put industrial jobs there? Show me along any light rail line where great prosperity has occurred. Ask Gresham about that. Uh, and, and tell me who flocks to that area. Who I want to live near that area. You know, we, we, let's go back to the homelessness thing a little bit. Most of the commissioners participated here a little over a month ago with surveying um, homeless individuals who came uh, to a Clackamas Service Center where we fed them. And it, uh, there was a recent article in the Oregonian here a few weeks ago. You, you'd you have to be crazy not to be fed or not to starve in Portland area. So it's not food. But here's what we found with a lot of people. And I, I say a lot. I can't give you a percentage, but it was at least a quarter of the people we surveyed want to be homeless. Don't ask me why. It's a carefree life or whatever. And, and we all also know from some survey work that has been done that there's a greater influx in the summer of especially youth coming up who are homeless because I guess they come up from the L.A. area and many other warmer climates. But there's a lot of people that don't want to, want, don't care about housing. There's others who are desperate for it. There was a young couple that was particularly poignant because uh, this woman had two children from a previous marriage. And so uh, she broke up with that gentleman and hooked up with a gentleman who has two domestic abuse felonies. Don't ever ask me why a woman would hook up with a man with two domestic abuse felonies. That alone prevented her children from getting housing because it is darn tough to find housing when you have a felony, especially for domestic abuse. So here she was sacrificing the well-being of her two children so she could hang with this guy. The kids weren't in school. They were school age, and yet she persisted in her insistence that they deserved housing. I don't think it's a responsibility of Clackamas County to provide housing for, the, for uh, people who are, are unhoused. I think that, that, that's their job. A part of it is, the, is industry. It, it certainly is apartment owners. Part of it is a, is a state, and the other part is the federal government. You know, um, the housing problem is, is a big problem, and Cindy Becker, who has now left us again, our Health, Housing, and Human Services Director said, you know, of all the things we talk about, you know, having a, um, skills, and we talk about having a job, and before you can even consider most of that, although we did meet people when we were surveying, uh, people who lived out of their truck, their car, yet had a job or a part-time job, but housing is so important and integral to the success and the elevation of those people who are down. I don't have the answer for that, but I'm darn sure I don't have the money for it either. And we, I think that Clackamas County has taken a turn away from owning housing and participating with such people as Northwest Housing Alternatives and investing into their units, and then they qualify the people to live in those units. All right, so shifting from housing to revitalization, what is being done to attract new business to Clackamas County? What are the county's most important businesses, and how does the county support those businesses? 
You know, it's not only new. We always talk about new, new, new. But what our Economic Development Commission has asked to do this time, normally they, they ask for their direction from the board. And in previous years, we've given that to them. They came up with a fantastic idea. They want to find out why people are still here, what we can do for them. Do they want to expand? What do they see as obstacles out there that we could possibly help them with? That is a fantastic work because many of our very successful businesses in this county started here and started small, and they grew, and yet we retained them. So I would say I'm very proud of our, our business uh, uh, services uh, department, uh, Catherine Comer uh, and her crew, and how they have they go out and they recruit people to come to Clackamas County. More importantly, they go out and talk to these businesses and say, how can we keep you? And again, with the EDC working on it in the next five to seven months, they, they will come forward with some value, valuable information on how we retain the businesses we have because it's great to want new businesses, but we better take care of what we got here as well. Thank you. Uh, good answers, uh, John. Uh, I can think of three things that we can do to attract new businesses. Is create large lot industrial zoning in Clackamas County. We don't have a lot. We don't have a 50-acre site that if a business wants to come in, decide. That's one thing, is we have a deficit in our industrial lands. Number two is the Blue Herring Mill Project. We've invested a lot of money in that. We've gone to this table. We've created partnerships with our good neighbor Metro and Oregon City and Clackamas County. County to make that happen. And that was a coalition of a coming together of a lot of different opinions and a lot of different philosophies in government and how it should work. But we really set those aside, decided to roll up our sleeves and work together and make that happen. I want to thank Tom for uh, being a part of that too. And the number three thing is we have a uh, uh, a development coming uh, across the uh, I-205 uh, called Eagles Landing at the New Hope Church site. We have worked very hard with the developer. He's asked for some concessions. We were able to give those concessions. And the most important thing about that property is it's a church. It does not pay property taxes. Once it's going to create hundreds of millions of dollars of assessed value, and we will be getting $3 million of taxes a year once that is completed. The overall investment to the county was very little. It was 2%. It will probably go lower as prices increase. But we came to the table. We negotiated a hard deal with the developer to make sure he performs. He has to perform before any um, type of incentives are gone his way. But we really have gone out of our way, and this board has really stretched itself to come together to vote on these two really important projects to make them happen. And I'm, I'm very happy about that. I think once this Eagle Landing project gets up and uh, is built and, and done, and the Blue Heron Mill site property, there's a private uh, developer there, I think that uh, people are going to look at Clackamas County and say, wow, you know, they can do this. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, I just want to go back to Eagle's Landing a little bit. You know, the, the, the Eagle's Landing has been a vision for years. I think what this board did this last time is say, great, you can have the vision, but unless you produce something, you're getting nothing. And so we put some really strong boundaries. You have to do this before you get that. And lots of times I'd say, you know, uh, other communities give away a lot and they don't get anything. I think we, uh, particularly in this project, have really put some really tight parameters and requirements in order to get anything from the taxpayers. Then we expect you to do something, and I think we're doing that. You know, I we look back on our old contracts, I don't know, last 20 years, and lots of times the county gave, gave, and gave, got nothing back. Well, that's changed. I think this board has really made it a priority to make sure that, you know, if you promise it's something, you're not going to get anything from us until you fulfill your promise. And i got to thank uh, our uh, county council, uh, Stephen Madcor, for his work on these contracts and, and his staff because we've really held the line, and I'm really, really proud of that. Uh, Lots of times, you know, people think, oh, here comes the government. We'll make sure they pay extra money. They've got all the money. 
And uh, we don't let that happen anymore, so I'm very proud of that. I, I could tell you were waiting for your turn. Hand it over. Sherry's been shut up. I got to say a couple words about Eva McIntyre. You know, it has been said that our board is dysfunctional because we disagree occasionally. That's not fair. I mean, the fact is, if you, if, if you think that disagreeing is dysfunctional, go down the legislature. I mean, the point of the matter is, is I lost this vote four to one. I was the lone dissenter, and I've never been the lone dissenter. But look, folks, I'm a real estate broker. I believe in great prosperity. If you look up True North, it was an important survey done and funded by a lot of state agencies. It was done by DHM Research. In there, they said, across Oregon, only 34% of the people believe in business incentives. 34. I think that's reflected in Clackamas County and their citizenry. There's nobody that convinced me, and nobody said that this development could not happen without our 2%. Nobody dared say that. Now, if a developer is so worried in a development of 2.1 million square feet about a little 2%, then they're riding the razor's edge, and they probably shouldn't be in the business. So this is a direct giveaway of public funds that didn't need to happen. We've talked about the traffic needs around there. You give me $10 million, and I'm going to try to help cure the problem known as the Sunnyside overpass over I-205. Nobody dared tell me they can't do it with that 2%. So instead of the developer putting the 2% in, he's putting our 2% in his pocket. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our time. Depending on you guys, we have time for one or two more questions, depending on your answers. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this one. This one's via Twitter, a comment from Dave on Twitter. He asks, can we add a small percentage to property taxes for road maintenance? That way everyone pays since everyone uses the roads, even those without cars. Now, uh, and you might have uh, heard me talk, and certainly it was on the, the video, Dave, we cannot use ad valorem property taxes for road maintenance. We can't build a road with property taxes. That is one of our problems. A lot of people say, well, you've got all this money, you know, this, this county that has an $800 million budget, by the way, which over, well over $600 plus million dollars is not discretionary. It must be spent in a certain way, especially with health, housing, human services, uh, for police protection, et cetera. So we would love to pull money away from our taxes and spend it on roads. We're precluded from doing that. What we're going to have to do, and, and I, I think that we're bold enough to put forward a measure in November to ask the voters, how do you want to help us fix your roads? But uh, we cannot spend, again, ad valorem property taxes for road maintenance or construction. Thank you. Well, I, I think one thing that is often brought up is that we do spend your property taxes on maintenance of signage, brush removal, ditches. We just can't repave a road. So one of the ways, like we spent the 500000 last year, is to pay for some of that additional, those side costs that influence road maintenance. But it doesn't give us the ability. I mean, I personally think that every dime we spend in our other departments I don't even want to think about taking that money away to put it into brush removal or sign replacement, uh, you know, unless we see something just flagrantly a waste of money. And even if the taxpayer said, yes, you can pay, uh, spend your ad valorem taxes on road maintenance, I'd be very hesitant without a very deep analysis of where we would get that money. But the law says we can't. So we took $500,000 of our general fund dollars and supported those services that help to maintain roads but don't actually maintain roads. And I, and I hope this year that we might be able to get as high as a million. Uh, but, you know, we have really worked hard. Those costs of maintaining the sides of roads, the signs, the ditches, uh, tree trim and all that stuff also 
continues to rise. And my, my, I think we were about five million short on those kind of dollars. So we can keep dumping money into that and never pave another road, or we can help defer some of those costs, which we did last time, and we'll do this time. But it, it, we, keep, you know, that's why we're talking about a, a transportation district, or whether it's a gas tax or a vehicle registration fee. We were looking at the Selwood Bridge. There's one thing people said. If you spend that money in the county, we'll support it. So I'm looking for those people to help us raise that money. Okay, I think this time we definitely have time for one more question. And that is regarding a family justice center, which we haven't touched on yet. So in late 2012, the Board of County Commissioners approved a family justice center to help victims and survivors of domestic abuse. How successful has this center been in doing that? Actually, it was 2013. Okay. Um, we created a model of the Family Justice Center where uh, a person who suffers from domestic violence can go to this place called a safe place and seek refuge from um, her abuser or his abuser. Uh, take their children there. And the reason why this is so important is because at that place they can access an array of services that they may not know available, uh, emergency housing. They can get closed because oftentimes they flee the home without any of their possessions because they're in such grave danger of um, being hurt or, or possibly killed. And so they go through there, they uh, analyze, uh, they counsel, uh, they recommend things. Uh, we have a TV hookup to the uh, courthouse uh, for the lawyers. And so it has been uh, a huge success. Jim can talk about this more, about the numbers. I don't remember the numbers of people coming through there, but it has been um, a, a success story. We initially invested $300,000 in this. The sheriff gave us the building for a dollar, uh, and it's a secure building. It used to be a federal law enforcement building, so it's quite secure. And we just decided to run with it to try to make the program go. Uh, the uh, uh, women's um, services nonprofit who managed this place has been very successful in their private fundraising, and that was part of the equation. So the community has really stepped up to help make this uh, a successful venture, and uh, we're still keeping our, our fingers crossed uh, that it's something that can uh, eventually grow and be a model for other counties to follow. Well, I wish it was an absolute failure and we didn't need it, because this kind of abuse should not happen. Uh, I believe we've served over 1,200 people, uh, and I'm sure it's going to continue to grow. Clackamas Women's Services has been a great partner and is a great fundraiser, and I look forward to working with them in the future. Um, you know, I, I, I can see us outgrowing this facility. Uh, it's just across the street. I can envision a campus site someday where you can go and you can maybe find some temporary housing. Right now, we basically refer people, or we, uh, you know, uh, contact have lawyers that work with them to make sure that they're safe. But I, I, I could envision a campus someday where we can have, you know, all those services there on site, maybe even with a courthouse. And uh, we have a great piece of property there. But it has been absolute success. And I, it's sad, but we continue to grow. And part of that, I think, is an awareness and an opportunity. You know, if you have a one-stop place to go, people are going to use it, and that's exactly what they've done. I believe the number was a little under 1,000. Understand they served women a little under 100. Now, you add in the children, as Jim was talking about earlier, and it came up to near 1,000. Let's not forget that the safe place is not just for women who are abused or men, but it's also for seniors. And so seniors can go there and uh, obtain the same kind of services. I'm fond of what our sheriff says about uh, this problem because we've talked about a cycle of criminality, which absolutely exists. And in the cycle of domestic abuse, it will not stop until the cycle of silence does. We all need to be cognizant of that. We are mandatory reporters of any crime that we see because of our office. Our employees are the same. 
I would put, put it out to you, anybody out there, that if you know about abuse, you should be reporting that for the benefit of those that are being abused and for the benefit of your own soul. All right, so our time is actually up tonight. We want to thank you for joining us for the 2015 State of the County Address. You can watch the replay of this on the Clackamas County Government Channel and also on the Clackamas County webpage. Thank you, commissioners, for joining us tonight and answering our questions, also audience members and those of you at home. And I want to encourage you to stay involved. You can follow us on Twitter or Facebook at Clackamas County. Together we can make Clackamas County a better place to live, work, and play. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night, everyone.